And joining us right now is uh, somebody that probably knows more about this than anybody else in the world, and that's Julian Assange. He is the founder and editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks. He's an Australian computer programmer. And uh, how are you, sir? Welcome to the uh, radio program. I'm good, thank you. I appreciate you being here. All right, let me first start with, let's go back to the beginning. Because for 10 consecutive years, you have never gotten anything wrong that I can find, and you stand proudly on that statement. Is that true? It is true. It's it's an enormous reputation to try and keep up, Uh, and that's why... By the way, I've gotten things wrong, and I have to apologize and correct. A lot of people in the media don't like to do that, Julian. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've been quite successful in never having got it wrong. So that's why we have to spend time uh, vetting our material before we publish it to keep that perfect reputation. Now, I've got to be perfectly frank and blunt with you. At one point when the whole WikiLeaks story and what it was was being revealed, I was, as an American citizen, i got to be honest, very nervous, and I was very critical of you, and even at one point thought that you were waging war against the United States. And I... That's how I felt at the time. And I also worried, Julian, that, all right, where does this hacking end as a big believer in privacy? I'm thinking, all right, there's no end to this. This is going to go after every American citizen, every single person, every text, every email. And, you know, as somebody that believes in the right to privacy, especially for individuals, I was concerned. What I didn't factor in at the time, and I will admit my mistake is that I think you have done the United States of America and the world a great service. And let me tell you why. I think, number one, you showed a vulnerability that, as a country, we needed to know about. You told me the other night it was simple for you to break in and get American records. Is that true? Well, not for me. In in general, our computer security is incredibly weak. Right. So for all for all sorts of you know organized crime, other states, teenagers in their bedroom, sure. So I think on that level, I think making the United States of America aware of that vulnerability is a really good thing, because now hopefully they can hire the right people and fix it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but if we if we go back a bit, there was a lot of false statements. You know, we published most most famously, we've published a lot of things from a lot of countries over the last. Uh, decade that have put guilty people in prison, uh, released innocent people from prison, uh, led to international settlements, including against the largest ever international settlement against Russia in the Yukos case. Uh, So, yeah, we we published uh, serious things. But under the Obama administration, when we published Hillary Clinton's cables, uh, her reaction because it was very embarrassing that she didn't protect them, uh, was to try and kill the messenger. And as part of that, they launched a PR campaign to try and suggest that our publications had caused people to come to harm, U.S. soldiers and others. That's false. In fact, the Pentagon had to admit under oath in 2013 that they could not find a single person who had been physically harmed by our publications. So, but that false messaging you know, was assumed, because it came from the government, to be true at the time. And, of course, a lot of people were understandably angry in the United States. But that was false, and they had to admit under oath that it was false. You see, this is where I think that my thinking, and, and over time, number one, you made America aware of a great vulnerability, and that is that if we don't have cybersecurity, America doesn't have secrets. And I think that any country in, the, in a day and age of ISIS and radical Islamists and those that would bring harm to innocent men, women, and children anywhere around the globe, I think that's enormously important, especially from a national security standpoint. And I think the other thing that has had a pr- pretty profound impact on me, and you mentioned a number of examples mm. where WikiLeaks has literally led to truth, I think you exposed a level a deep level of lying, of uh, of a corrupt government, deeper than even me as a staunch critic of government, was kind of shocked by. 
Does that make sense? So in that sense, I think you have done the American public a service. And Well, that's, that's at the purpose of our organization is to try and bring the truth to the public, which is otherwise suppressed, either because of media bias, and we've seen a lot of that in this election, where actually a lot of the um, Democrat-aligned media like MSNBC, uh, Politico, uh, Washington Post, we exposed as acting against journalistic ethics and taking marching orders uh, from the DNC, checking, in the case of Politico, uh, their copy with the DNC before even uh, their own editors uh, managed to see it. So, uh, unfortunately, there has to be uh, a place where whistleblowers, uh, consultants, and yes, even... uh, Computer hackers who care about the truth have a place uh, to publish it, which is verified where people can trust what's published because we put our entire reputation on the line to make sure it is trusted. The thing that I asked you the other night that also had a a pretty profound impact on me is I asked you, okay, you, you obviously have the ability to hack into government records around the world. Uh, would you ever use it against individuals? And you're, you are an emphatic no. That's not the purpose of your organization. It's, it's not the purpose of our organization. But also, we're, just, we're not interested. We don't hack. We're a publisher. We encourage whistleblowers to come forward by campaigning for them, by co-founding the Courage uh, Foundation, which supports whistleblowers. Um, yeah, and showing that when people publish with us, they have a big impact. If you look at the DNC publications, there had been some other publications by uh, The Hill, which is not a bad publication for Washington, D.C., Gawker, and so on, documents from the DNC, PDFs, uh, but they had no impact. Uh, But when we published the DNC emails, there was enormous impact. The top five people the DNC had to resign, including the president, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, And that's because, uh, A, we're really trusted by the public and by journalists, uh, and B, we have a philosophy of making our material available to the people equally so they can check uh, that what it is claimed to say, it really does say, they can find what's been buried by the press or missed by the press, either just... Uh, by accident or lack of resources or because of political bias. You know, um, it's interesting because I know that a lot of people say, well, Hannity, you changed your views on Julian Assange, and I'm just looking at this very objectively. These are the same people that, you know, they know I don't want Hillary Clinton to be the next president. That's a fair and true statement, and I would certainly understand people could jump into that conclusion. What they will negate to tell people is there's nobody the last number of years that has been more fiercely critical of Republicans and how weak and timid, and feckless, and spineless, and visionless they are, and how they allowed Obama's agenda to go through. They never challenged him. They never used their constitutional enumerated powers to stop him. And I've been far more critical of them. For me, it's not about politics. It's about the truth and what's right. And when Republicans are weak, I call them out, which I don't see the Democrats do. Let me ask you this. Well, there's good, there's good, and, go good and bad people in both parties. Uh, I'm sure I agree you with that. Ag- agree with that. I agree. I think there are well-intentioned people, and I also think there are yeah. people, as you have learned. I mean, you know, one of the things that amazed me about the whole DNC hacking is here you had racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, you know, gay slurs, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, that is the narrative, the false narrative that I, as a conservative, fight back against. That is used yeah. by the Democrats every election season, and by the way, it pisses me off. And talking about Hispanics as taco bowls. Right. Right. And and no one really paid attention to that. That was that took my breath away. And that got covered up. Let me ask you well, I, Go ahead. I found I found the most uh the most serious email in the DNC collection is actually, to my mind, not the most, you know, salacious. It is an instruction through the chain of command of the DNC to plant false stories about Bernie Sanders supporters uh, committing violence uh, with a number of outlets and to, quote, uh, not have their fingerprints on it, unquote. Mm-hmm. So, so they, if you look so, at the DNC charter, yeah. 
it says explicitly that they, in a presidential primary, they are meant to be strictly neutral and impartial. Yeah, no, I think that's extraordinarily well said. Let me ask you specifically about Hillary. When you were on TV with me the other night, mm. you I, I brought up a quote that you had given recently to the New York Times, and you accused the press in America of supporting Hillary Clinton. You said the American liberal press is falling all over themselves to defend Hillary Clinton. They're erecting a demon that is going to put nooses around everyone's necks as soon as she wins the election, which she is almost certainly going to do. What did you mean by that? What I meant is this kind of, uh, you know, the Democrats are always speaking about uh, how terrible McCarthyism was. Uh, and there were, and it was in many ways. Uh, but at least the USSR actually existed then, and there were actually Russian influence campaigns in the United States which were serious. What we're seeing now is Hillary Clinton and her campaign trying to whip up a neo-McCarthyist hysteria uh, where she claims, or she claims that effectively Donald Trump is an agent of the Russians, uh, that WikiLeaks is an agent of the Russians, and where her campaign uh, uh, has also implied that Jill Stein, the Greens leader, uh, is a Russian agent, and that uh, The Intercept, another U.S. publication, uh, effectively Russian agents. So what, what do we have here? We have, let's look at it objectively, we have the ruling party's preferred successor running around uh, calling the opposition leader, in fact multiple opposition leaders, and the critical press foreign agents. By the way, isn't, the, isn't that the that's very a terrible, yeah. terrible climate to permit? Uh, and what kind of press climate is going to exist afterwards, especially if Hillary Clinton is elected? It will be perceived to be a validation of that hysteria. Uh, and so the press afterwards will be cracked down upon uh, and online publishers and people on social media. You know, it will lead to a very harsh climate where the First Amendment will be very significantly eroded. You know, um, what we're talking with, we're discussing the issue of WikiLeaks. Its founder, its editor-in-chief, Julian Assange, is with us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back on the other side. A lot more to ask him, more specifically, about what he's discovered about your government, how we got started in all of this, uh, what specifically, to the extent that he'd be willing to share, what batches of information does he think he'll be releasing before the election? We'll get to that. Also, we'll get to your phone calls coming up and much more. 800 941 Sean is our toll-free telephone number. As we continue, we continue our discussion here with the founder, the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, and that's Julian Assange is with us. Um, you told me that you have batches, what you called batches and batches of information that you're continuing to vet, specifically related to Hillary Clinton, that you have said numerous times you believe will have a profound or could have a profound impact on this election. What else can you tell us about that? I said significant. Profound is possible. It depends on how, you know, the stuff is taken up. But we saw a very good take up last time with the DNC leak, so I'm hopeful. Uh, well, what we're, I can't scoop ourselves before we, um, before we publish, but we have uh, tens of thousands, uh, possibly as many as 100,000 uh, pages of documents of different types uh, related to the operations that Hillary Clinton is associated with. Uh, they're from um, several, I don't want to speak about sourcing, but uh, let me put it this way, that in response to DNC publications, um, a, a lot of people have been inspired by the, the impact, and so... Uh, step forward with additional material. So you are currently putting all of this together. Where in the process are you? Because I know that it's important to you to maintain your perfect track record in terms of not getting information wrong. In terms of a timeline, we do have an important election in just 61 days. Where are you in we're, terms of that we're process? We're quite confident now on the initial batches. 
in terms of vetting them, that they are accurate, they are what they say they are, that our sources are not lying to us about what they say they are. Uh, but it's it, it's a quite a uh, complex and <clears throat> business to you know to sort things, to index them, to make sure they're presentable, to try and see what the top initial angles are uh, that come out. And we're a small shop. We're working around the clock. We understand very much uh, the time pressures that people have and how significant it is to try and get that out. Uh, we worked like hell to get the DNC publication out before the DNC. Uh, we did get it out the day before the DNC. Uh, I am very confident we're going to get this material out long before the day before the election. Now, so as a result talking. of your, your interview with me on TV, the, yeah. the Clinton campaign sent out a message associating you with Roger Stone, who's not even involved in the Trump campaign. Does that have any impact whatsoever on your decision to make these batches available? And when you say batches, that's plural. How many batches would you say you have? It's a, a question about how the first batch is digested, but there's some natural batches, so we're talking at least three or four natural batches but as we see how the publications pro progress and what particular angles people uh, decide to run with you know what the public finds the most interesting uh, then we might extend that or we might contract it. it a lot of this is resource bound as well uh, we're you know a small investigative publisher so there's huge weight on us uh, yeah to to get it all done it's hard work how would you describe tell me the adjectives if you feel that the batches are relevant in terms of what would interest the public and the electorate what are the adjectives that you would use or you would want used after you release some of these batches to describe the information that you're going to pass forward what would you want people to say De uh, devastating <laughs> well, I, i'm not going to scoop myself on your show sean well, you can, um, you absolutely can. I will give you. We're on five hundred and fifty radio stations right now, all across the country. I have no idea if you even uh, know who I am. We're, but we want, you know, we're a diligent, careful organization. Yeah. So, all right. Let me. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to go. I don't want to go there. I am confident it is significant. Uh, and Th this is what you said to the so PBS. There's, um, so there's a lot of, you, you know, a lot of different angles. Uh you said what we, what we have is a significant amount of information. The information itself is significant, and it pertains to Hillary Clinton's campaign, and we will be releasing it in several batches, and we will be finished as, as we are finished with our journal, journalistic work on each batch. Yes. It seems yes. like there's no end to this. Um, I, I, I think what me. the Amer We've been doing this for 10 years. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. It does feel like this. Almost like job security. Did you get, would you answer this question, did you get all 33,000 deleted emails that Hillary Clinton deleted? I'm not commenting on what we have other than to say we have significant material about the campaign. We will be releasing it as soon as we possibly can, as soon as the journalistic formatting presentation work is done. Uh, if people want to speed that up, we're tax deductible in the United States. That allow us to hire more presentation people and more researchers but yeah other, otherwise i don't want to um scoop our publications before we are ready to present them to the public let me ask you about the personal impact in your life um you'll never give your location i won't waste any time asking you but you are hidden away and you have been for a significant period of time there was an attempted break-in at Apparently, you're what they describe as your embassy home. Um, Ecuador has questioned London's inadequate response. On top of that, it was revealed yesterday, Sweden's Court of Appeal is debating this week whether to grant you an open court hearing in your campaign to rescind an arrest warrant against you. Um, the appearance is related to sexual assault charges that you're facing in Sweden. Is Do you claim all of this is false and is this as a result of the work that you're involved in do you believe why well, i'm not facing any sexual assault charges i haven't been charged understood That's a frequent a frequent uh misreportage in fact in that swedish case we have a lot of cases but in in the swedish case 
I haven't been charged. Well, the appearance ever. that you took back in I've, 2010 I've already, was I've related been, to that, yeah. I've already been cleared by the Chief Prosecutor of Stockholm. Uh, the thing was resurrected after the involvement of a politician, a guy by the name Klaus Borgström, back in 2010, in the middle of our, our kind of conflict with Hillary over the publication uh, of the cables. The United Nations, this year, after 18 months of litigation and review, uh, on February 5, made a formal finding that I am being illegally detained uh, and that I should be immediately released and compensated. So that's the facts on there. What we're trying to do in Sweden is enforce um, that determination. Let me ask you this. Or get the Swedes to make it themselves. At the age of 16, this is fascinating to me, mm. you broke into the systems of NASA and the U.S. Pentagon. You were... Busted on 25 counts of hacking. You're 16 years old, which, you know, I guess the question I think my audience would most want to hear from you is this. In all of these years that you have read all of this relevant information mm. from the bowels of our government, what should the average citizen know that they don't know about America's government? And more particularly, I would argue, under this president, but any president that you want to share. That's a very interesting question. Uh, it is an interesting experience to be, to, to be a very young person trying to understand the world and educate yourself. Uh, and as an Australian, you know, Australia is a long way from anywhere else, but you can kind of get out with your mind, which is what I and some other Australian teenagers were doing, exploring the world, trying to understand it. And that, of course, includes the U.S. government. I would say that some things to understand. Even the worst institution has good people in it. Uh, the people at the bottom are usually pretty good. Um, as you go up, people become more duplicitous. Uh, we can talk about some big structural things here. They're quite... Well, one, in other words, like explain. over all these years, you've been accused of being a rapist, an enemy combatant, uh, a CIA covert operative, a Mossad agent for Israel. All of these I things. Can't torture. Yeah, I mean, and and listen, <laughs> I got to be honest. I'm a big supporter of the military because I think the world is a very evil and dangerous place. I really do. I believe in covert operations too, you know. But I I know that you, you know, in 2010 in April with the release of Collateral Murderer. Yeah. You know, you showed an American helicopter in Iraq opening fire on unarmed civ civilians. Yep. That, that's not what I want my military doing. Now, I don't want well, them to be... there might have been one or two that were armed. Actually, we, we yeah. say that in, explicitly in the video. But yes, the majority not armed, not engaged in combat, and two were Reuters journalists. Uh, at, later on in that video is, is the serious incident, the real serious incident, where there's a Reuters journalist wounded crawling along the gutter Good Samaritans turn up in a van with two kids on the way to school. Uh, they go to collect him off the street, and then the helicopter opens fire uh, on that van, which is just collecting the wounded. Uh, so then there's a co then there's a cover up, uh, and in some ways the cover ups are more serious because they're they're it's a systematic corruption. You know, you can have one event or another event, but the way the system heals itself. Uh, is by, you know, um, being accountable for when things go wrong. That's how you... Do you agree with my worldview, though, that there is evil in this world? Do you agree with my worldview that, that, that unfortunately, human beings haven't all fallen short of the glory of God, to quote a great book, that, you know, we are dealing with some evil people and they don't respect human life and human dignity and there have to be steps to protect innocent people? Uh, yes, I've dealt with and seen very bad people. I mean, friends of mine have been assassinated. I've had calls for my assassination. Uh, there are a lot of bad people in the world. There's a lot of good people as well. So go back uh, to my original question some, then. What would you tell the American... Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish your thought. No, I was about to say, I think that, you know, you've got basically 10% uh, of people are really very fine. 2% of people are psychopathic liars uh, and actually enjoy causing suffering to others. That's true across nearly every society. It varies a little bit between societies. And then the people in the middle, they kind of go either way. They take their leads from 
yeah. you know, examples that they see. Well, so back to my original. To send, yeah, back to my original uh, question. To make general deterrence. Well, let me, based on what you just said to me, let me ask the question this way: Based on your classification of people, with many being good, many being in the middle, and two percent being psychopathic, and based on all the information you've been able to read and and glean from from things that Americans don't have the opportunity to see, except that you're sharing it, how would you classify Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton? Obama's hard to understand. There's a clear transition in Obama as he gets into government and then starts to identify with the authority that he has. Uh, and as far as we can see, starts to become um, more, more abusive in his exercise of authority because he identifies too much his own ego with what has happened in relation to various parts of the government. The president should be someone who forces accountability on the government rather than someone who uh, tries to hide when the government gets it wrong. And Hillary? Hillary, Hillary Clinton, I mean, I'm not that interested in the personal assessment. Uh, but you're able to, let, way, me, let me say this, you're able to glean things that others are not. Like, for example, in the DNC case, you were able to glean racism, sexism, yeah. homophobia, all things Democrats say they're the champions of women's rights. They're the champion. Like Hillary Clinton takes money from the Saudis. The Saudis practice Sharia, treat women. They kill gays and lesbians. And there's no religious freedom for Christians or Jews. I find That's that repressive. Right. And she takes their money. I find that the height of hypocrisy. So my question to you is, you know, does she fit into that 2%? She's a does-what-it-takes kind of person. The, the question is, how has she gotten where she is, where she is now? What is her... Who are, her, who are her kind of supporters, her cronies, uh, the people that she relies upon to propel her and her working methods? Listen, I know, uh, I know you've given us, been very generous with your time. Can I ask you a yeah. question? Would you be able to stay one more segment? Yeah, sure. You know, because I, I, I honestly, I, want to, I don't want to interrupt your questions, but I have so many others, and uh, I don't want to interrupt your answers, so I have so many other questions because I really want you to speak freely, and, uh, and that's why I... I my list of questions is very long, and I've read a lot about you, and I'd like to share a lot of it with our audience. So if you can stay one more segment, Julian Assange is with us. He's agreed to stay, founder, editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks. We'll pick it up right where we left off here about his worldview, what he's been able to glean from the documents that he has seen and is now sharing with the world. As I said, I believe there are two major benefits for you, the American people, in all of this. Number one, that we have it's been revealed how unsecure our computer systems are, and there is no cybersecurity within government, none whatsoever. And number two, also a level of corruption that I think should shock the conscience of any law-abiding, constitutional-loving American and, frankly, citizens of the world. We'll continue more with Julian Assange. We'll also get your calls in, 800-941-SEAN, toll-free telephone number. We'll continue. Stay right here for our final news roundup and information overload. All right, news roundup, information overload here on the Sean Hannity Show. Uh, we continue with Julian Assange, the founder, the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks. Um, I want to go back to, again, you've been able to see things from within the deep bowels, not only of our government, but other governments as well, and information that you've gleaned that others have not had access to although you put it together and you you share it with the world and i know you've come under great criticism as a matter of fact you know did you say earlier in this interview i'm just paying attention to you here because i think you've had friends assassinated because of That's your right. work yes in in kenya can you t can you expand on that what happened well we were involved in a process where the more than uh 1500 people it's quite a complex domestic thing in Kenya, but they had been killed by the, some elements of the Kenyan police, and the Kenyan, Kenyan Human Rights Commission was investigating this. The guys were being go, uh, originally shot, then garroted to hide the, the, wounds, uh, the wounds, and then chucked into rivers and buried in landfill, etc. And uh, the guys we were working with, two lawyers, uh, were going to the Kenyan Human Rights uh, Commission uh, to present uh, their results. And uh, then they're in their car in the afternoon and the van pulled in front, van pulled in behind with AK-47s uh, uh, and they shot through the windows uh, and killed them. Sad, isn't it? 
It's really, it, it, there's so much evil in this world. It's so horrible sometimes. Let me ask... Just, you, you, asked, you asked a question before, Sean, about, uh, which I struggled to answer a bit, about, you know, what is my worldview after being in the bowels of institutions for a long time. I guess it's, as you get, as you see people near the top of the institution, what they say internally to each other, uh, it's... <laughs> It's basically a contempt for democracy, a contempt for the public, uh, and the self-confidence uh, in that contempt. Can I, can I ask uh, you to expand on it in this way? Through yeah. the prism of the DNC and those emails, again, which showed racism, sexism, misogyny, anti-Semitism, you know, gay slurs, etc. You, you know, you talk about a contempt for we the people in the, in the case of the United States. That showed real contempt and real hypocrisy. And I, I want you to go into the broader question and I'll, you have free reign to go anywhere you want in mm-hmm. terms of what especially related to our election. Do you, would you think the American people have a right to know about Hillary Clinton based on what the, the bowels of, of documents that you have read that maybe we have not? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to scoop our upcoming publication, Sean. Uh, you got to give me I mean, credit for trying. I mean, you, I know, you don't expect me not <laughs> to try. As as, Jeez. As far as the DNC leaks <laughs> yeah. are concerned, I mean, you know, everyone knows the big takeaway. Uh, the DNC acted against its own constitution to try and rig the primary process against Bernie Sanders and for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, immediately afterwards, Hillary Clinton... Uh, said that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is, you know, her best pal, literally two hours afterwards, her best pal and would become the honorary head of her campaign and be her surrogate, etc. Basically uh, saying, hey, don't worry, all my cronies, uh, as long as you do something corrupt for me, you'll be taken care of. And it's very interesting that she feels that she must make that statement because obviously politically... It doesn't help her to make that statement with the American people. It obviously doesn't help her to make that statement with the Bernie Sanders guys and girls. Uh, so who is that statement for? It's for the, you know, her cronies and allies, which she wants to reassure. Um, don't worry, I'm going to look after you. If you if you help me in a corrupt manner, uh, you're going to be taken care of, and that's a very bad sign. So she's corrupt. She is a corrupt, uh, behind the scenes, when nobody's looking, she's a very different person than what she portrays publicly. Fair statement? Yes. Is she a, a fair statement. But, and we, but we all... I'd just we, like to... Yeah, go ahead. Sean, can I go into some of the FBI report? Please. And our cables about uh, Hillary Clinton that we've published? Yes. Because I, I think this is something that really needs to be focused on because it's undeniable so in the uh, FBI interview with Hillary Clinton, I have it here. Uh, I'll just quote from it. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, so this is about the C in brackets on a document. Now everyone, everyone in, who has a security clearance or has been in the Senate uh, or is an investigative journalist or, and frankly, a lot of people have been in the most people have been in the military know what a C in bracket means. Next to a par- paragraph, it means classified. An S in bracket, classified confidential. An S in bracket means classified secret. A U in brackets means unclassified. And TS in brackets means top secret. Uh, so in her interview, um, which is reported by the FBI, uh, when asked what the parenthetical C meant before a paragraph within the captioned email, Clinton stated that she did not know and could only speculate it was referencing paragraphs marked in alphabetical order. Yeah, there's no A and B. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> there's no A and B in yeah. the parenthesis system. Okay, and there's no D either. Yeah. We have something much stronger than that, much, much stronger than that, which we published her cables, uh, all of her 2000 and nine cables, and as some of her 2010 cables. So uh, that's her first year as Secretary of State. And 
there are literally thousands of examples on her website where she has signed off the cable with her own name, Clinton, and the paragraphs above that have this C in brackets. She has been using that C in brackets thousands of times while she was Secretary of State. Now, if, you know, if Hillary Clinton turned around and said, oh, but, you know, I just uh, dictated that cable, someone else put these brackets in, which I don't believe uh, happened all the time. But anyway, she turns around and says that we also have thousands of cables that we have published that she's were sent to her that had this C in brackets. So the original, so, the original, I never sent or received classified information was always a lie. That was always a lie, but she is intimately familiar uh, with this C marking. That we have published proof of mm -hmm. her writing it. Her it was. It let me add one other thousands thing. Thousands of times. There's one email thread from June of 2011 that included Hillary telling a top aide, his name is Jake Sullivan, to send mm. secure information through insecure means. And, and in response to her request for a set of since-redacted talking points, you know, he writes, well, they've had issues sending secure facts and they're working on it. And she responded, well, if they can't turn it into non-paper, meaning email, with no identifying heading and said yes. non-secure. Now, why is that important in light of what happened last night? Because last well, night was the first shows, time she mentioned there's no heading. You don't, you don't need a exactly. heading. And, and it shows there was a heading there. She was yeah. aware of headings. Of and course. she was aware of the importance of removing these headings. So there is a concerted effort to defy the law, defy security, do whatever she pretty much damn well pleases, and then she lies with abandon. Now, you were talking about three personality types in the last half hour. You said 2% are psychopathic. That kind of seems to me to fit into that category, and you didn't want to go there. I don't want to make a personality assessment. In, in some ways, it doesn't matter. She does what she does. And that's... Yeah. She does what she does, and she has the allies that she has. And that's going to define uh, her as a president, just like most political candidates. Uh, and that, to some degree, is unalterable. Well, then let me ask you well, about America's media, good, though. You you put out all she's this. A good or bad person doesn't. It, uh, well, a good person doesn't matter, you know. She's going to act like that. If you read the People of the Lie, matter. though, I don't know if you've ever read uh, The Road Less Traveled or The People of the Lie. I mean, lying in and of itself is an act of evil. There's a certain dishonesty, and when you do it with a calculated purpose to advance one's career, I think it becomes even more pronounced. Um, but the American. She's a liar. She's a liar. She, she, she lied. That's a concrete example of her, li her lying. How many Proving times do you think you've lying. caught her lying uh, based on your analysis of what you found? Well, I think there's dozens uh, of incidences. So she, ru she lies with regularity. One, which, this particular one that I just gave, yeah. this is someone, something that everyone can see. You can go to wikileaks.org slash plus D, P-L-U-S-D, uh, and just put in Clinton uh, in the search term, select uh, the classification as confidential or confidential no phone or secret, and you will see those cables. Let me ask so you this ev question. Everyone can prove it. What do you, how do you assess America's media? Now, I started at the beginning of this interview, and I admitted I think I was wrong about you. And uh, I apologize, by the way. I didn't do it the last time, but I will now. Because I think you have done a great service for the country, and I really worried, and my rationale at the time, I actually stand by it, was I really thought you had compromised the security of Americans, and that's where my focus was. Uh, so I did have a rationale, but it turns out that I was wrong. Um, but in this instance, you know, how do you assess American media where you're doing all the work for them? And I know that even the New York Times criticized you, which kind of made me laugh so much. Bill Keller at the Times at the time you know, uh, attacking you personally, and well, but then stealing myself. every yeah, and then stealing everything that you put out. I mean, it was hilarious to me. But you know, my question to you is: How do you assess the American media? You lay out all this information. They're not informing the American people to the extent they should, are they? There's some good journalists in the American media. There are, but if we're talking about institutions uh, in this election cycle, it. I mean, it's really embarrassing. Uh, I mean, some of that's come out through DNC e emails, but. 
that there's a full blown, there's a rapid part of size INA, sorry, there's uh, increasing bias in the media, much more than there was four years ago. I'm not sure why. I think it's probably because Hillary Clinton's network has grown so large and is intermingled with a lot of that media. You look at the Daily Beast, for example. Uh, its parent organization has Chelsea Clinton on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, those sorts of connections exist uh, in MSNBC, wow. uh, Washington Post, wow. Politico, wow. etc. Basically, they're all in bed with each other, aren't they? Well, there's a, they're in bed with each other, but you could be in bed with, you could be, you know, have friends or allies yeah. or relatives, but you might have ethical principles. Well, I criticize Republicans, and I never get credit for it. I beat the crap out of them. Let me ask you this question based on your knowledge. Do you think mm. that Hillary's email server issue p- potentially led to the death of innocent people? Like, for example, like Benghazi or the Iranian scientist or any of those issues? Hillary Clinton's emails, a lot of people have had them. Uh, if you read carefully the FBI report, you see that all her emails from her private server, private server in her lounge room, there were three, uh, were sucked out to a cloud run by some contractor, she says. In a bathroom. Uh, illicitly. Yeah. They were also pushed into Gmail. They were put on a laptop, uh, which they posted to themselves and then immediately lost the whole laptop, they say. I think it's an interesting question as to whether they lost the laptop with all the emails of the United States top diplomat on it, uh, or whether this is a quite elaborate and frankly clever way uh, to make a laptop disappear when you're expecting a subpoena. Uh, I think we know. I think we. Th- I think the people that use bleach bit. Phones, we know the answer. 15, Thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fifteen phones break it, busted up with a hammer. Fifteen phones. They destroyed at least five with a hammer. Uh, only two could be found. Uh, but she only used one device, one Julian. She told us she only used one device. That was a lie. That was a lie. And and also she had an iPad, uh, and her emails were being received on that iPad. Mm-hmm. So there's emails that we have published <clears throat> where you see her sending emails from her iPad or her staff are talking about her receiving emails on her iPad. Uh, oh. I'm a privacy believer. I... I you know, I just have this belief that we ought to be able to, you know, individuals ought to have a right to privacy. Governments are very different for me, except for covert operations, military secrets that I think every government does have a right to have in an evil world. Um, like I, for example, use an iPhone. It's supposed to be encrypted. How easy would it be for you to bust into anybody's iPhone? And I ask this on behalf of my audience that probably, like me, is concerned about their own privacy. Well, I'm, I'm not a computer hacker. I was one as a teenager. I became a security expert, uh, an analyst and publisher and so on afterwards and fighter for the freedom of the press and the First Amendment and so on. But, of course, we have to study all this in order to know how to protect our own organization. WikiLeaks is constantly attacked yeah. by state parties, by everybody, uh, ma- mafia and so on, everyone. We were banned by China uh, as early as 2007. <laughs> so we've had this ongoing war. <laughs> Trying to protect ourselves for more than a decade. This is going to make a great movie one day. Is there anybody you want to play you in the movie? Well, no. No, okay, nobody. You want to do it yourself? No. Rather question. like there to not be such things. All right, just one more question, final question for Julian Assange, who is the founder, editor in chief of WikiLeaks. When we get back, also your reaction to all of this, 800 941 Sean. If you want to be a part of the program, that and more coming up straight ahead. All right, we continue. Final question now for the founder, the editor in chief of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. Yes or no? I really want an answer from your best analysis and your understanding. Do you believe Hillary's email caused the death of mm. anybody? I don't know. As I was saying before, they circulated very widely on lost on laptops in the post, copied to remote servers, copied to Gmail, flowing over the internet. So that's kind of great from a WikiLeaks perspective because it means such a, a wide number of, of access points. Sources. Yeah. yeah, it's great from a WikiLeaks perspective. But we are, we are talking about the emails of the top U.S. diplomat. My, my philosophy about secrets, military secrets and so on, is yes, I believe that there are genuine secrets for a period of time. For example, uh, our sources, we obviously keep them secret. Otherwise, they would be harmed. Uh, but it's the amount of time. 
I don't think there is any secret in government that must be kept secret forever, and that if there was such a secret, it would lead to unaccountability. What we're talking about with Hillary's emails is whether you know, there was a, a military operation that was important, say, to save, save a hostage, for example, held by ISIS. Yep. And could that information come out near the time that that was happening? Or CIA officers um, knocks without official you know, um, diplomatic status if their identities came out and they were in a very difficult situation uh, in the Middle East. You know, I do lead to harm. I do think there's possibly. there's something here that we need to pay attention to, and I'll just leave this thought with you as you uh, you you go to your dinner. Is that you know the skills that you and your team, and mm-hmm. I know you consider yourself a journalist, have accumulated over these many years, you know, potentially could be used to hack into whatever electronic devices ISIS is using and save innocent lives. There is a potential for great good that be, that can be accomplished here. You know, maybe just informing the American people what a pathological liar Hillary Clinton is because you've seen it for yourself time and time again is a wake up call. And at least people go in with the full knowledge of what they're doing when they vote on November the 8th. But I wish I had more time. I I really thank you for your time. And I appreciate uh, you uh, taking the time to be with us and share this information. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Sean. Bye bye. All right. be, Be safe, by the way. I think a lot of people are out to get you. Yeah, they are. All right.